Paul in Michigan trying to figure out uh, why things, slavery are wrong under an atheist worldview and discussing morality is what I've got here. Atheism is in a worldview. Does that answer your question? No, I'm not saying that atheism is a worldview. What I'm asking is if you do not have a moral arbiter, regardless of whether it's a Christian God or some other being, I believe in the Christian God, the Bible, but if there so is you're fine with slavery, that, what? So you're fine with slavery then? No, no, no. I'm not fine with slavery, but I, I do. The Bible so you're is picking your Bible. Your, the Bible is, and, and it portrays it as being of God. Can you point to anything in the Bible where God says he's against slavery as opposed to in favor of it? Well, the question doesn't ask if slavery is wrong or right, right or wrong from a Christian perspective. The question I'm asking is from your I, perspective. I know. You have no right. standard. And what, what Matt, I, I, what Matt was you asking the last you. Because I answered it during the last call. I literally answered it during the last call that from per purely selfish perspective, and because we know what the impact of slavery is, we know that the world is better off if we don't have slavery. Right. And your moral arbiter that you're claiming that your morals come from supports slavery according to his book. So I'm not sure that I want to pick your God, uh, the God of the Bible, as a moral arbiter that I'm willing to follow. Well, here, here's the reason why I state this. If it is just to my best interest, then there should be nothing wrong with the Israelites holding slaves or any other culture because every culture thought at that time it was right. So what's your issue with it? That's my question. Because they were wrong. So not only do we have the issue that they – so th here's the thing, Paul. Um, yeah. I, I explained this in the last call, which you might not have heard. Yes, in the short term, slave owners convinced that owning slaves is in their best interest, but we know that it doesn't actually produce a better world. It produces a worse world, particularly a worse world for the slaves. You said, ah, essentially that everybody thought it was in their best interest. No, they didn't. The slaves didn't, and they should have known better. But at the end of the day, you know who should have really known better? A god. A god should have known better, and yours didn't because he doesn't exist. He, okay, he, well, he does exist. Prove it. You would have to disprove Jesus. No, I don't have to disprove shit. If you say God exists, prove God exists. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, it does, Jesus did exist. And to say he didn't exist, and that's who my God is, to say he didn't exist, you would, ha you would be hard pressed to find evidence to disprove it, even Bart Ehrman. No, you're, you, again, you're getting the burden of proof wrong. You're making the claim. We're telling you to prove it. We don't have to disprove anything. All we have to do is ask you, prove it. And if you're going to point to the Bible, the Bible is the claim, not the proof. Okay. So show us your proof. Okay, well, Josephus, one of the, the Jewish historians who was totally against Christianity, said that there was, the, he has verified proof that Jesus existed. Where's your proof? Oh, I no, don't sir. Care. No, Josephus sir. is, yeah. That's a flat lie. Josephus does not say he has verified proof that Jesus exists. As a matter of fact, in Josephus's work, the one passage that mentions Jesus explicitly is considered to be a forgery, but even that doesn't say he doesn't, he has proof that Jesus existed. You are exaggerating Josephus. No, it's not considered to be a forgery, even by even by atheist historians. It no, is, it is. The Testimonium Flavium, it is the most contentious passage in there because it breaks the nest, the narrative. And it doesn't say he has proof of Jesus. It, 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 it breaks in the middle of a conversation. Well, it's not just him, though. It's Typhon. Okay, no, 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 no. You came with Josephus. Yeah. I just countered Josephus. Are you going to acknowledge that what you said about Josephus wasn't true? Or are you just going to move on to the next thing that's not true? He, no. He, that passage, which is, which was contested, is even by Bart Ehrman and many other historians. I don't give a fuck what Bart Ehrman says. I know the man. I've, been, I've moderated debates with him. What Bart Ehrman says is irrelevant. Bart Ehrman could be wrong, couldn't he? 
He could be, yes. No, stop citing people as if they are authorities and if they, they should be, this is true because an authority said so, because that is a fallacy. Okay, okay. Well, then let's take, let's take the gospel writers. Who are they? We, we used to believe, uh, as far as you know, by early tradition, Paul, Paul. the book of Mark was written by John Mark and is the, is the Paul. Hated by Peter. Yeah. Paul, the Gospels are anonymous and unsigned. We have no idea who wrote them. It's a matter of church tradition that certain names were appointed to them. We have no idea who wrote them, nor do we have any good reason to think they were eyewitnesses. We have ideas. No, we don't. Matthew was written. We, we have good reason to believe that Matthew was written by Matthew. No, we don't. No, we, no. Here, here, let me open a Bible for you, since you don't seem to be capable of opening and reading it. But on the very first page of the Bible here. Right in front of me. Okay. Um, yes. So so does your Bible include information about authorship? Because uh, there is no known author. We don't know who the author is for Matthew. It doesn't say. It's not signed. We have no original copies. And it almost certainly isn't an eyewitness testimony. We, You're right. We don't have any original copies of the books of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. Uh, or, or anything in the Bible. We have no originals for anything in the Bible. You know. No, here's what we do know. We do know that John was actually pre- re- originally thought to be have been written in the 200s, the second century. But we did find a, post- a uh, poster stamp size manuscript of John 18 that was dated to be about 90 to 150, somewhere in there. Right. You can go to earlychristianwritings.com and get all of this information. But the one thing it'll also tell you is that we don't know who the authors are. So stop saying we do. The, well, okay. I'll give you according to church tradition, but we have very strong church. that these authors, the ones that are, that are claimed are the original authors. There, there is no evidence. Wow. The, okay. the manuscript. I'm, just, I'm, I'm going to shut up now, Paul, and I'm not going to say another word. This is between you and Jim because <laughs> you want to cite Bart Ehrman when it's convenient and ignore him because he would tell you that the Gospels are anonymous, no originals. We have no idea who wrote them. I don't care what church tradition says, and I don't care if you produced the author of the Gospel of Mark, marched him into my room, and he said that he was an eyewitness and told me that would not be sufficient evidence to conclude that Jesus is divine or that there is a God. So you're trying to accomplish something that even if they marched the person in here, you could not accomplish. And you're trying to do it with anonymous copies of copies of translations of copies that we know have been altered. We know where the alterations happen. We know where the- No, we don't, sir. You cannot know that if you don't have an original, which you already acknowledged we have originals for none of it. So you can't know. We have 53,000, we have 500, over 5,000 copies of the New Testament alone. Manuscripts, complete, complete copies, and and five thousand is what you're you're claiming. There's more Which than that. Is the original. There's more than that. There's more than that produced every fucking year. You have no originals, and so you can't say how much the mod the, the the versions that you have are different from the originals. Can you? We can recreate from what we have that we know. How do you, how do you recreate something that may have been modified to back to the original without knowing what the modifications are? Because if I have, let's say I write something down, right? Uh Or let's say we find a piece, we get an original. You and I both write down a copy of Plato's writings, right? What do we write it down from, Paul? What do we write it down from? What are we basing it on? We're we're copying Plato's student, okay? We don't have the original? Student. We don't have the original? He's, he's, He's doing a hypothetical, Matt. So hypothetically, you and I... Hypothetically, why would God want you to do hypotheticals and try to piece things together? Why hasn't God preserved his word like he said he would? Yes, he has. That's, that's, he has not. He no. has not. The fact we don't that you're have trying originals, to copies of copies means that God did not preserve it, did he? 
No, it does not mean that. What it means is that he didn't want us to worship those pages like we do. Oh, this argument again. No, so, yeah, the, yeah. here's, gonna have until it. you have the originals, you cannot, from copies that have errors, recreate the original. The only thing you can say is, okay. here are the oldest copies that we have, and here are where they differ. But what you don't know is if, are, are those copies of copies? How many copies between the oldest copy you have and the original were there? And if you don't know that, you can't recreate the original at all. And, you know, once you start making changes and you're constantly making changes to this text, at what point does that text become a completely new text? I, I would agree with you if it was if that were the case. It's not like a case of telephone. My see, this is the sure it is. Do you know why it's a case of, of telephone? What was the most common way of of uh, exchanging information or ch telling people about their ancestors before they started writing stuff down? Oral tradition, yeah. Yeah, and guess what? That's telephone. So before you even get to writing things down, you have an oral tradition. In fact, you don't even, you have an oral tradition from the days of Jesus Christ until the stuff got written down. And so you have a, a game of telephone happening before you even write stuff down. So one, even if you could produce an original, unless that original was written by one of the direct apostles, then you have problems with eyewitness testimony, which you should probably go investigate because eyewitness testimony is probably the worst form of testimony you could possibly have. So uh, yeah. you're still got problems. Hmm? Well, here, no, no, here's, here's the, here's the issue though. We know that the earliest manuscripts that we have of John date somewhere to between 90 and 150 AD. Which is a generation after and is written from the oral tradition, which is a game of telephone. So even if you can produce the original, we don't know that that was the original eyewitness testimony. Okay, well, let me ask you this then. How do we know about Plato? Oh, from his from the writings. That's all we know about him. Okay. And other people's writings about him. Who wrote down? Yes. Who wrote down the writings about Plato? Uh, his students and other people. But again, this this doesn't. So his again, students. we're not we're not debating. We don't have to debate whether or not a man named Jesus actually existed. But what we are debating is whether or not the supernatural elements of his existence actually happened. So if somebody all of a sudden started saying that Plato rode a horse into heaven, I'd have a problem with that, right? We're not debating whether or not Jesus actually exists. We're debating whether or not Jesus had any supernatural abilities. And guess what? You can't do that from the originals. But we also can't necessarily say that there was one Jesus. There may have been several people who got lumped into this one character, which happens a lot in the oral tradition. So even, again, we go back to once you've got these oral traditions and you start, start writing about them, you don't have the original, and therefore we don't have eyewitnesses, and therefore all of your testimony, all of your evidence is suspect because we only have the eyewitnesses that are in the, the, the supposed eyewitnesses that are in the Bible. With Plato, we have enough people writing about him and enough students writing about him to conclude he probably existed. But Notice even if you the word probably, who cares? Not, nobody is saying you need to believe in Plato because he's magical and will save you from eternity. So it's irrelevant. Plato could 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 be a fiction, and it wouldn't change a thing because what I judge about Plato is his words, the words that are attributed to him, whether he's real or not. Just like I can judge Voldemort's words, whether he's real or not, and I can judge Jesus's words, whether he's real or not, and I can judge a God's word, whether he's real or not. I'm not advocating for Plato or for being a servant of Plato. You're coming here, you're coming here and suggesting that there is a God that you can't prove, that the Bible is evidence of it when you have no originals. You don't have a path to show. But let me ask you, when did oral traditions cease and written tradition? Oral traditions have never ceased. What difference does it make when oral tradition ceased? Do you have... Because the written down translations, the written down tradition 
started back before the time of Jesus, correct? Correct. There are books and writings before Jesus, including the Dead Sea Scrolls. What difference does it make? Okay, so oral, so then you're, you're, it doesn't matter whether oral tradition was good or not. Who says that someone was not there writing down? You know, I'm not saying they were. Because all, all of the writings come from oral tradition. So if oral tradition isn't good enough to, uh, to transmit actual facts, and, and it isn't, then what good are the, oral, are the written traditions based on the oral? Okay. Well, yeah. It, it doesn't matter if Jesus himself correct. wrote a gospel, signed it, cut his finger, put his own blood stamp on it. None of that would prove that Jesus was fucking magical, would it? No, and I'm not saying he's magical. I'm saying he's. It, it, you don't think Jesus is magical? The point of scripture. You don't think Jesus is magical? How do you turn water into wine? How do you raise the dead? How do you walk on water? That's magic. That's divine. No, man. Oh, okay. Magic. Fine, fine, fine. Trick, fine. Fine. Stop, Paul. If Jesus himself wrote a gospel, signed it, put a magical photograph on it, and stamped it with his blood, that doesn't mean he's divine. Doesn't mean anything in that is actually true, does it? Fine. The resurrection means that he's divine. There, you have Paul, 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 Paul. Why can you not answer the question that I ask? Why is it that every time I have a conversation with a theist, they refuse to answer the question I ask? If Jesus himself wrote a gospel and signed it in blood, does that mean that what that gospel says is in fact true? No. I, I couldn't understand. Was that a no or a yes? It was a no. Okay. You're so, right. so, it's not so, true. Hang on. Proof. Hang on. Okay. You just admitted that even if Jesus wrote a gospel, signed it blood, that wouldn't mean that what the gospel says is true. So what evidence do we have that the gospels are true? We have the historical manuscripts. We can recreate the we can recreate the life no. of No. You can't recreate the originals. You can't recreate anything. So when I asked you, even if Jesus himself did it, wrote it down, that wouldn't mean it's true. And when I ask you what evidence you have, you go point to other people's writings that are not firsthand that also would not be true, right? Where is the evidence? What would you be looking for? Because I, the evidence that I have is Jesus is saying that he would die you, and rise from the dead. You have no evidence that Jesus actually said that or that he actually did it. What you have is a story. Where is the evidence? And that's the, that's the thing. We have the manuscripts, enough manuscripts to recreate and to prove that Jesus didn't. No, no you don't. No, no we, we've been over works. this. You don't just stack up anecdotes and come up with a proof. No matter if everybody on the planet, let's hear it, Paul. If everybody on the planet right now, except for me, was convinced that they had experienced God, does that mean they're right and I'm wrong? No. Okay, so now we're in a situation, this is perfect. I'm literally the only person on the planet in this fictional scenario that does not believe in God. You cannot come to me and say, he believed in God, he believed in God, he believed in God, he believed in God, because none of that should convince me, right? Shouldn't convince anybody. You're, you're absolutely right. Good. You're then, right. then what you're saying is you have no evidence. You have nothing that should convince anyone, because what, all you keep pointing to what I'm saying is, 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 is testimony. And that's, here's the thing, when, you, when you're dealing with historical evidence, you, that's pretty much all you have is testimony for any, including Paul, Paul, or any, you know, Paul, Paul yeah. listen, listen very carefully. I'm trying to help you out. You just said that this is the way historical evidence works, that this is the most you have. However, that's true for historical evidence in general, but could God yes. present evidence right now? Yeah, Absolutely. And stop whining and pretending that we only have the historical evidence. If God is in fact real, God should be able to demonstrate it right now. Why doesn't God do that? Well, that, he does. He does. 
No, he doesn't. This is the thing. I didn't want to bring up. I didn't want to bring up anecdotal evidence or evidence from anecdotal. Anecdotal. I think you mean anecdotal, which is all we've been talking about for the entirety of this call. But here's the thing. No, I don't want to bring out personal experiences. If that's, I could tell you my testimonies of why. I'm not. I'm not interested in your testimony. We've already agreed that that shouldn't convince anybody. I asked you why God doesn't prove it. You want to pretend that this is just, well, this is where we're stuck at. Cause you know, it's the way history works. We only have copies of copies. We don't have anything. If there were a God, God could have good. God could provide original manuscripts to everybody on the planet right now. God would be smart enough to know that he shouldn't be providing manuscripts at all because the written word is not anywhere near as strong as God showing up and talking to everyone right now. And you think that you, your God wants you to piece together a story and make it seem reasonable. Why doesn't God just fucking prove it? He did. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. No, no, no. sir. You don't, You're you making can't. a claim. We're asking for evidence. You keep. We keep going over the same thing, right? It's just over and over again. You keep going back to the Bible, and we keep telling you the Bible is the claim, not the evidence. And then we discuss why it's the claim and not the evidence, because you've got a bunch of manuscripts for which yeah. we do not have the original. We okay. cannot recreate the original from the changes and all of those originals are done after the fact and are part of an oral tradition, which gets us into serious problems. So again, where is your evidence? Quit pointing to the Bible. Quit talking about the Bible. Don't mention the Bible again. What Give I asked, your evidence. Okay. What I asked was, why doesn't God prove it right now? Yeah. Why doesn't he prove it right now? How many times can I say the same question? And oh, yes, that's the question. He does prove it right now. He does How? prove How? himself. How? No. How? I've seen miracles done in his name. What miracle have you seen done, and how do you know that it came from a god? I broke my back in five places and walked to the hospital two days later after we prayed about it. No pain. I had pain, but no crutch. You broke your back in five places. You broke your back in five places. And you walked out of the hospital two days later because you prayed. Did the did the doctors treat you at all? Other than pain medication, no. And your back just healed. Well, and you have the x-rays to prove, like you walked in, here's five breaks, and two days later the breaks were just gone. Yes. You you have you have you have the the the, the x rays from when you walked in with five broken I have the x rays of the break. I don't what what's that? I have the x-rays of the break, if that's what you want to see, yes. Do you have the x-rays from two days later when the breaks are all gone? No, I don't have x-rays. You don't even have the beginnings of a hope of a wisp of a miracle. And let's say, for example, that you walked in with five broken bones in your back, and two days later you walked out. How do you know that God did that? Because of my faith in him, because I I believe that I don't give a shit about faith. I'm asking about evidence. You don't get to cite here's God's proof, he healed me of a broken back, because that's not the true story. The true story is you think God healed you from a broken back, but you cannot demonstrate that. Not to your satisfaction. Not to reasonable satisfaction. Only a faith head who just believes whatever they already believe would accept that. The rest of us want evidence. Why won't God? And by the way, my question, sir, was why won't God prove it now? You claim he did, then you, which is not now, that's past. You claim he does, and you, you have a backstory that you cannot prove and you cannot tie to God. So answer my real question. Why won't God prove it right now? Because maybe the proof that he's he would bring, you wouldn't even buy it. I mean, Jesus, oh, that's a load of shit. If, You're speculating. Why won't God prove it? Here's, I am speculating, but if you, for instance, Luke 16, Jesus gives the parable of Lazarus and the rich. Goodbye, sir. I'm done. Yeah, just back to. I don't, I don't need another fucking Bible verse ever. Yeah. <laughs> you and me both. Oh, uh, back to the Bible, and I told him not to mention it again. Yeah, it's like 
I, now I, I'm starting to think I'm gonna have to define what what the word now means. Yeah, <laughs> which is kind of sad, but that appears to be the state of education. <laughs>